Hi there strikers these is the part of the story behind Annabelle doll. It's very difficult to close it, Spira says. It's like opening a window in a log cabin out in the woods thinking a nice monarch butterfly is going to fly in, but, a wolf, coyote or bear can come through and harm you. The analogy is fitting for the spirit realm. You don't know what's out there, so you must be careful with what you invite in. There, conjuring mirror in Annabelle comes home, there is a television set in the museum that shows the future when you look into it. When Daniela looks into the set, she becomes frozen, as if the TV were Medusa's face and she had been turned to stone. Spira says that this TV set was completely fabricated for the film, but that the idea may have come from the conjuring mirror in the occult museum. There, mirror was given its name because someone supposedly attempted to conjure spirits on its reflection. With this particular object, a man in New Jersey is said to have sat in front of the wall-mounted mirror for hours on end, continuously asking to summon his deceased family members. Hey, I want to see you, can you come and talk to me? He would ask the mirror as he sat in darkness with nothing but, a red light bulb behind him. The man beckoned the looking glass for about two weeks. After a fortnight passed, ugly monstrosities faces appeared on the mirror. The hellish faces were so diabolical that they drove the man to a mental institution. Spira points out that this type of conjuring is known as crystalmancy. Crystalmancy is when a spirit is able to present itself on a shiny object such as a TV, a mirror, a plate, glass window, a bumper of a car, etc. The Warrens gained possession of the conjuring mirror when the owner's family called them to their home after he was admitted to the mental institution. In the Annabelle Comes Home Museum, a werewolf a paw is shown to audiences resting on a shelf. Later in the film, a living, breathing werewolf lurks outside the Warren's house in their bushes, near their chicken coop. According to Spira, no such werewolf a paw exists in the museum, however the werewolf a paw was likely invented as an odd to a London case Ed and Lorraine worked on and even penned a book about. Werewolf, a true story of demonic possession. There was a case in London where a man would turn into a werewolf, Spear claims. He didn't become a werewolf like in the movies, but he would act like a werewolf. The man would growl, turn his fingers into claws, and attack people on the streets of London. It was the werewolf of London case, and the man who came under attack was William a.k.a. Bill, Ramsey. Spira says that the Warrens believed that Ramsey was possessed by the spirit that causes lycanthropy, the supernatural transformation of a human into a wolf. To save, Ramsey's soul, in 1989 Ed and Lorraine brought him all the way to the United States from London to have Bishop Robert McKenna perform an exorcism on him and free him of the evil force. After the exorcism was carried out, Bill Ramsey said he was free from the evil that was in him. He returned to his former self and went on to live out a normal life. Once again Daniela breaks the no-touching rule of the museum when she presses her fingers down on the keys of the museum's piano. After only a moment the teen's playing is disrupted when she is spooked by an otherworldly man who appears suddenly playing next to her. As in the filmic depiction, Spear claims that there is in fact an organ in the occult museum and that it belonged to Ed Warren, who obtained it after authorities cleaned out a haunted house owned by Reverend Eliakim Phelps in Stratford, Connecticut. Eventually, the residence burned down, but before the home went down in flames, it was emptied. Someone from the authority at the city of Stratford reached out to Ed asking him if he'd be interested in keeping the organ. Ed Warren secured the instrument but unknowingly carried more than an ordinary organ back with him to the occult museum. Destroy the museum's objects because they are evidence of past cases. Besides, if one were to harm an item, 
that person would merely be destroying the vessel, and releasing the evil from which it is contained. There is also another crucial reason Spiro continues to safeguard the objects now that Ed and Lorraine have died, for, students of the paranormal, the occult museum, is like a classroom where I can actually keep, tainted, objects, on display, for peers, and have them get a better understanding, Spiro says. The occult museum is currently closed while it looks for a new location.